Okay, we're gonna throw three pound ball, bottle, or vase. However you wanna best describe it. <clears throat> First thing, just as normal, water in the middle of the wheel. Lock it on, lock it down. To the center of the wheel, bring it up. By the way, this is for ceramics two and ceramics three. We'll get into some hand building demos here pretty soon. Wheel wedge it a little bit. should have this centering process fairly mastered by now. To a certain degree. Got a little bit of air in there, so I'm going to go back up a little bit more. Bring it back down. I can feel it in the middle when I'm compressing the clay. I'm telling you, you get a little bit of air there trapped in the middle. <clears throat> when you go to try to open, it's really going to affect it. It's going to change it. Now the trick with a bottle or a narrow neck vase is <clears throat> you can't go too, too slow. Especially as we start to talk about the coloring process because if you go too slow it will grab at your clay or will grab at your tools and grab at your hands but at first when you're opening you want to slow down a little bit just as you would with a cylinder or a bowl you know open up like a cylinder Expand the bottom, just like you would a cylinder. <clears throat> I'm not going to make the base too wide. I want the diameter a little narrow, so I'm going to want it to come up, and I was going to want, and I want it to narrow back down to a point. <clears throat> so we're just going to go on, start bringing that clay up. Starting with the pressure on the outside first with the fingers or the sponge, whatever is most comfortable for you. Keeping your finger on the inside as a guide. Compressing that rim with every pull, just as before. Create that little groove at the bottom. Lock those fingers together. Bring that clay up. Start feeling any resistance. Get your fingers wet again. Continue where you left off. Got a little bit of a, that air still trapped there on the top. We'll go in and end up cutting some of that off. Now what you're going to do is you're going to get the height that you want first. And then we're going to collar in. And whenever we collar in, that's going to be the point where the bulbous bottom is going to end and the narrowing neck is going to begin. Before I go any further, let me just go on and check for any air bubbles. Yep, there's one right there. Poke it. I'm going to go on and cut some of this off before it gets too thin using my wood knife. There we go. I'll end up using that in another project. So I cut it off right where that air bubble was. I feel there's another one down there too. So. It's good to learn how to go on and address these things whenever they emerge, because they will, they will emerge. Okay, more pressure on the outside, starting to add some pressure on the inside now, bringing it up. I can feel the air pockets popping as I'm going up. Now when you're doing this technique, 
you're making a bottle or you're making a thin necked vase you want to make sure it doesn't flare out too much it needs to start tapering in it needs to go in it can't flare out or it's going to become a bowl if it becomes a bowl you're going to need to just go on and make yourself a large bowl and move on and try it again next time because to try to flare that bowl shape back in to get a narrow neck bottle is not going to happen I'm just cleaning up any excess clay or slip or uh, water or slip in the bottom where I make the next pass more pressure on the outside first and then a little bit of pressure on the inside and they're going to go up in unison we got an air pocket down there Lessen the pressure as it gets to the top. Don't let it get too thin on top because remember, we're going to have to use that clay to narrow it off. Let me check for any more air pockets. Again, pop them as you go. Everybody's got an Achilles heel in ceramics. And I would have to say mine is wedging. I'm not going to lie to you. It is. <clears throat> I'm going to bring it up one more time. I don't want to get it too thin. This first one that I want you to do, I want you to leave it a little thicker. Not super thick. Just not too thin. Something in between. Right? If it gets too thick, it's just heavy. But it's better it's a little heavy than too thin because if you start making this and it gets too thin, you're going to distort it and torque it. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on and take this upper third. I'm going to start collaring it in. I'm going to get my fingers wet. I'm going to create this shape right here. And the knuckles of my index fingers are going to push it in. I'm going to drive it in. And I'm going to keep going up as I'm driving in. Just like that. All right. I'm going to go in and do one more pull, get a little more height. I got a little clay down there on the bottom. Use it to my advantage. Lessen the pressure as you get to the middle and up towards the top. You don't want to get it too thin. If you start collaring in, it gets too thin, it's going to torque on you. There we go. Got a little bit taller. Feel a little better about that. Clean this up on the inside. Go in and collar it again at that top third. Just above the middle. Okay. Go on and drive it in a little bit more. Come back down to the same area. Push in with the knuckles of your index finger. Use your other fingers on the other side to kind of help hold the shape. You can see it's starting to curve in right there. Now, before I do anything else to the top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on and belly out the bottom. <clears throat> Put my hand in there. I'm going to push out from the inside. And I push out from the inside with my fingers, and my fingers on the outside are going to rest right above my fingers on the inside until we get to that top third. Right there. Okay. <clears throat> Clean up your rim if you've moved it at all. Go on and cut a little bit more of that away at the bottom. Some more water on there. It's a trick. Whenever it comes to this, is plenty of water, lubrication on the outside, and then also don't go too slow. Nice moderate speed. We go in and push it out, belly it out a little bit more, and then I'm going to start pushing it in with my fingers on the outside as I continue that curve. Okay, this would be a nice little standard vase shape right here. You could. This is a, one example of a just very standard vase shape. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this curve here, this collaring, we're going to collar it in more. We're going to start narrowing it down. Now, before we start collaring in, you got to make sure you get all water out of the out, out of the inside. Okay, you can take, we have uh, some sponges that are attached to dowels. You can go on and grab one of those. Now what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to go in and push it back in. Start driving it back in, collaring it back in. Just like that. Compress that rim. And that point right there where I pushed it in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push out with my middle finger a little bit. And I'm going to push in with my middle finger above that to kind of continue that curve. And I'm going to keep pushing with my middle finger on the outside to keep narrowing it off. Okay, just 
just like that. See how it's starting to narrow out? Compress that rim. This is why I kept telling you, compress that rim every time. Check if you got any air pockets. Oh, I got one in the rim. Right there. Okay. So I keep saying compress that rim every time because that's going to allow you to do this technique. Then where I pushed in with my fingers, I'm going to go in and start pushing in with my knuckles again, narrowing it out. Press down. Now this body right here, this part of the body of the cut or the vase, cannot be pushed anymore. All right, we can push it a little bit right here, but anywhere below it we can't because this is just as thin as everything that's below it. If we start pushing right here, what's going to happen is it's going to it's going to fall. So what we do is we drop our finger right here, right where I'm pointing is where my finger is on the inside. All right, so that's where it's going to rest. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push right above that with my finger on the outside and kind of push in at an angle, going up towards the center. Okay, like that. See how it's slowly getting smaller, that diameter on the top? We just got to check our thickness, make sure it doesn't get too thin where we've done all that pressure. You can come in with your hands, you can cup the whole thing and keep that curve nice and even. Just barely any pressure at all. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to go in and push it back in again. So that clay is a little bit thicker. Just by bringing it up. Okay, we've got a nice belly shape here for the base. Nice bulbous shape from here to here. Now we're going to take this excess and we're going to start going up. Now I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the side of my middle finger on the outside, side of my middle finger on the inside. With equal pressure, we're going to start pulling up. Okay. Just a little bit at a time. See how it's getting smaller and smaller and more and more narrow. Now we don't want to go too slow because remember, if we go too slow, then we're going to torque it. We don't want to torque it. We want to keep the shape. You got to be somewhat gentle, but you also got to push it too. So it's a tricky balance. So when you get to this point, you're really narrowing off that neck. What I want you to do below it is you're going to take that metal rib, drop your finger right there where it's starting to transition, push out a little bit with your middle finger, and then you're just going to go in and gently drop that metal rib all the way down, curve it down towards the bottom. It's going to even out that body a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to throw this, make this a little bit thinner right here. Even out that shape. All right. Remember, just like I said, every time go on and kind of clean up that rim. Make sure it doesn't get too uh, doesn't get too off centered. Now I really got to check. You can see how thin it's getting in there. I got to drop this sponge in here, and pick up any water in there. Okay. Now I'm just going to keep bringing this clay up by using the side with my middle fingers. Yeah, that's getting taller and narrowing off. Get a little narrow neck bottle, a little narrow neck base. Now, if it goes taller than this, it's going to become more of a bottle. But with this shape, it's going to be more of a vase. So we'll go just a little bit taller so it's more of a vase shape, less of a bottle shape. I'm going to go in and take my rib. Because here's the thing. Every time you go to pull that rim to get that a little bit thinner, you're going to distort that bottom just a little bit. All right? So you got to go back in with your metal rib, and you got to reshape that bottom just a tad. And you also got to hook your middle finger on the inside. And if you deflated it too much, you got to make sure you push it back out. Kind of even out that curve. Okay. It just depends on how narrow you want this to be. I mean, if you really want this narrow, let's see if we really push it right now. Let me go in and even it out a little bit more below where I just pushed out with my middle finger on the inside. 
I'll go on and get this wet, splash some water on there, and then I'm really going to push in. And I'm really going to make it narrow. See that? See how narrow that got? So I'll push it in just a little bit more and I'll leave it at that so this video isn't forever long. And that's just using the wet fingers and getting a little bit of water on there and driving in that neck to make that little narrow neck. Now what I'll do is I'll just even that out with my middle finger on the inside and the outside and then I'll just go in and flare it back out to give you that flared opening that you typically see with a vase. Okay. Again, compress that rim. I like to angle the rim a little bit. Give a little more attitude on top. Just like so. Then I'll come in with my, my rubber rib. <clears throat> going to make a nice little undercut through the bottom of the neck by pushing in with the rib on the outside and pushing out with the finger on the inside right on the rim kind of flare that rim out just like that then we're going to take the side of that rib and we're going to push down at an angle right on the rim to flare it out a little bit Give a little attitude attitude's good there we go then once you get that, just go back in with your metal rib one more time. Start up here where it narrows in. Just barely let the tool graze over the top. Just kind of work it. Make sure that it's all an even curve. Round it all the way down towards the base. Leave the neck alone. There's no need to do anything else. The glaze will take care of the rest. <clears throat> take your rib. I'm sorry, your wood knife. And where that curve goes out, then you're just going to go in and cut that excess away down to that small tapered foot that we originally opened it to. Cut down to the wheel head, rotate it back. After you rotate it back, then you're going to take the tip and cut away that excess clay. that excess clay for another project. Pull that out of the way so you can see it. And then you let this set up a little bit on the wheel and then you come in and cut a little bit more, so taper it back down towards that point. There we go. Let it set up on the wheel for a little bit. Go work on a hand-built project. Go wedge some more clay. Go glaze something. And then um, come back, take your wire tool, run it off the, uh, from the bottom, from the wheel head, and then make sure your hands are dry, run it, grab it from the underside, pop it up, and then put it on a storage bat. Okay? All right, folks. There's how you make a little narrow neck base. All right? And uh, that'll be it for today.